Welcome back. It is Tuesday. Traditionally, when we check in with San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg, it is a holiday, the 4th of July, and the mayor is kind enough to spend part of his Independence Day with us. The mayor on his way as we speak to the uh, festivities out at Woodlawn Park. Thank you for joining us, Mayor. Happy Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to, to you all. One of the great traditions in our city, uh, our Independence Day celebration at Woodlawn Park. So looking forward to it. Since you are going to that big gathering, it has been another deadly, violent, uh, long holiday weekend across the country with several mass shootings, one last night up in Fort Worth. Uh, a word about uh, the large gathering there tonight and public safety when it comes to that and just your thoughts on, on another weekend like we've just seen. Well, of course, uh, San Antonio is a city of celebrations, and so people have enjoyed the Woodlawn Park celebration, our, our Independence Day celebrations, and gatherings in the parks and all over town uh, every year. So we will have police presence. Uh, at, that's normal. We're ready for any uh, challenges that may uh, ensue in this day and age. But, of course, we want everybody to be safe. It is uh, those events that have been happening in other cities are are tragic and unfortunate um, and uh, just uh, one of the things that we have to be aware of and vigilant for unfortunately in modern day America but we we certainly will have security as we always do in all of the large-scale events in San Antonio. All right Mayor I know this is a holiday week really uh, but the staff there at City Hall already getting started on next year's budget can you talk about uh, what are some of the items with the big focuses for you this year? Sure, it is a long weekend uh, for a lot of folks, but the city never sleeps and our, our city staff and the council um, are hard at work on the FY24 budget and that is uh, upon us and we will be ratifying that budget probably here in the next uh, six weeks or so in mid-September. Mid, uh, mid some of the features of that are some uh, significantly augmented public safety services. We're going to be adding roughly 100 new officer positions in the patrol division for SAPD. Uh, many people have been watching the uh, evolution and the implementation of our animal care services strategic plan and, and really honing in on the challenges that we're having with stray animals and, and improved um, spay and neuter services. We're also going to be adding a significant number of new animal control officers to help with the stray population as well. Of course, um, a lot of the news that's happening from Austin right now is the legislature can't seem to agree on on what property tax reform looks like. But I'm happy to report that the city council uh, has already moved forward with our uh, property tax relief package for the FY24 budget. Uh, and we will be uh, increasing the homestead exemption for, to the maximum allowed under state law. So 20 percent. That's double what it was last year. And we're also uh, very likely to roll back the tax rate as soon as we get the, the final values in uh, once all the protests are cleared. But we'll also be um, rolling back the tax rate just slightly this year as well. So a significant tax relief from the city portion, which is one fifth of your tax bill, that's already moved forward. And, and um, uh, thankful that the city council unanimously approved that just a couple of weeks ago. Mayor, what would that relief look like for, for the average homeowner here in San Antonio with, with that relief and the property tax and, and what the city council approved? Sure. Well, the rollback would affect all properties, and, and it will be a, a, a small amount compared to last year where we rolled it back significantly. But that would be a reduction in the actual tax rate assessed on properties, uh, all properties, no matter what uh, classification they are, commercial or residential, multifamily, et cetera. The homestead exemption is for those folks um, who have declared their homestead. So one property where they live in, uh, they will have 20 percent of the value assessed um, exempted from city property taxes. So uh, depending on the property, on, on the value of your property, 20 percent of it will be uh, removed from the from the assessment. So uh, that part of your property will not be taxed. Currently, it's 10 percent. Just a few years ago, we didn't have a homestead exemption at all, uh, so it's a significant improvement. I'll also add that homeowners who are uh, 65 years and over, uh, they will have they already have their property taxes frozen. So whatever it was when you turn 65, it won't go over that. Uh, as well as um, disabled and senior exemptions uh, have already been put in place and up to uh, $85,000, and we adjusted that last year. So. 
all told, it's about $130 million uh, exempted from taxes off the city tax rolls uh, for helping, you know, reduce the burden. And granted, that's only one portion. It's one fifth of your tax bill. Uh, but city uh, council, uh, the, the city wants to do what we can uh, to reduce the burden, considering that everybody is feeling the pressures of inflation, uh, rising property values, et cetera. All right, Mayor, uh, shifting gears now. Uh, St. Mary's uh, Strip Bar announced recently that they're going to be closing this summer, and they're specifically saying that the construction really buried their chances of survival. What is your response to that? You know, the challenges of construction are, are obviously significant, but I, I will tell you that the St. Mary's uh, construction area is on target uh, from the delays that we experienced last year. It's moving forward. It's been open to tra it's been open to traffic both ways for quite some time now. Uh, we are working with business owners on all sides of that and other construction zones as well to make sure that the public knows how to access those businesses. Um, of course, you know this is the challenge of uh, the small business uh, ecosystem. Over the last several years, they've had a number of things that they've had to um, seen thrown at them from from challenges related to the uh, economic fallout of the pandemic to you know, again, uh, construction and, and disrepair of infrastructure, but we're working through that the best we can. I am very thankful that the city council approved significant amount of small business grants to help with those construction projects that, that you know, businesses that have been feeling the impacts of the pandemic plus construction, we've had a record number of small business grants to help with that. So we're gonna help where we can, uh, you know, and, and it's, uh, it is a challenging situation. We do acknowledge that. All right, Mayor Ron Nuremberg again on the way to the celebration for the 4th of July at Woodlawn Lake. Thank you so much for spending part of your 4th of July holiday with us. Have a good night, sir. And have, have a happy and safe 4th, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. Police in Ohio saved a man's life last week. They pulled him from a burning vehicle after he crashed into a utility pole and lost consciousness. It happened at, as an, uh, after an officer saw the driver weaving in and out of traffic and speeding. Now, body camera footage showed smoke and flames bursting from the hood of the vehicle as the officer sprang into action. It was joined by two other officers and they managed to get the 23-year-old man out of the SUV in time. The driver was hospitalized and faces charges of failure to control and driving under a suspended license. Now, police say he will probably face more charges. Some minimum wage workers will see a raise on their next paychecks. Oregon uh, raised its uh, minimum wage to $14.20 and Nevada raised it to $11.25. Several cities have done the same. In Los Angeles, workers will now make at least $16.78 and in San Francisco, $18.07. Some of these raises are linked to inflation and took place automatically as a part of a schedule. How much money low wage earners make can depend heavily on where they live, depending on the location. The federal minimum wage hasn't budged since 2009, staying at just $7.25. All right, a live look outside. Uh 96 degrees, very cool out there. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those clouds. Oh yeah, relatively speaking it is. It is, you know, been a really hot summer considering June. So it's been nice to have uh, temperatures shaved off a few degrees because of clouds. Well, coming up in the forecast, we're going to be talking about how there is a little bit of rain on the radar for some folks, but I'll have a look, uh, of course, at your fireworks forecast and get you ready for the return of triple digits by the weekend. Tonight, search and rescue crews are working to find a man who fell off a boat at Calaveras Lake. BCSO says the man fell into the water around 8.30 this morning while fishing with his friends. Boaters are being asked to stay off the water during the search. A security guard at an HEB convenience store is in custody following a shooting. SAPD says the guard shot a man in the leg. The man was allegedly causing a disturbance at the store. The guard now charged with aggravated assault. Suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton says he will not testify at his upcoming impeachment trial. Paxton was impeached back in May by the Texas State House. His trial is scheduled for September 5th. And 4th of July festivities kicked off this morning in the Alamo City. The official city 4th of July event started at 1130 this morning out at Woodlawn Lake Park. The fireworks there 
expected to go off later this evening around 9 o'clock. That is your 62nd 4th of July recap. A chicken looked good. Mm -hmm. Nice we weather to be out there. I mean, not a whole lot of sun. We've got some cloud cover out there, and it's not like it was last week. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's not too bad out there. And earlier in the show, we were talking about the weather way back in 1776, way far away in Philadelphia. Let's talk about weather history here in San Antonio for the 4th of July. Our hottest 4th of July ever was uh, back in 2009, just in 2009 when we hit 103 degrees. Tim remembers that 4th of July well. The coolest uh, high temperature recorded on 4th of July was 2007 when we only reached 82 degrees and the most rain we've seen on a 4th of July was back in 2003 when two inches nearly two inches of rain fell today. Well, it wasn't too bad out there. We got up to 97 for the high. Not too bad, a little bit warmer than average, but not by much. And then take a look out there right now. You can see those puffy cumulus clouds. They're struggling to develop in the vertical, so it's going to be hard for us to see much if any rain before sunset, although there are a couple of isolated showers here. Very, very small showing up on the radar right on that Wilson and Gonzalez County line nearer to Yorktown and Carn City. Maybe in Poth and Floresville, you could see a, a stray shower here before sunset. But once we see the sunset at 838 tonight, we are going to see any and all rain chances go away and it's going to be a warm breezy uh, evening for us. Temperatures are going to fall into the 80s for many firework displays. It'll be in the mid 80s and it's going to be breezy tonight. Winds are going to be from the south at 10 to 15 gusting up to 25. So be mindful if you're going to be shooting off fireworks that there will be a breeze. You don't want that firework to tip over and cause an issue there. So just be careful out there this evening. Looking ahead to the future cast for tomorrow, we're going to start off with clouds a lot like the last few days. It'll be mostly cloudy through about lunch and then in the afternoon, slightly better rain chances than today. We're going to see a few isolated thunder showers along the sea breeze, and those are going to try to make a run for that I-35 corridor. So it's very possible between about 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. that we see an isolated thunderstorm over San Antonio. That would cool down the atmosphere a little bit for us, and we need any rain we can get. 78 in the morning hours, mostly cloudy. 84 at 10, mostly cloudy. Afternoon, we'll see skies clear somewhat. It'll be 96 for the high, and just be aware that, again, as you're potentially heading home from work tomorrow, you could run into one of those isolated downpours. 97 in Bandera for the high, 96 in Canyon Lake. It'll be 97 at Stinson, 98 in Divine, 96 in Seguin, 94 in Uvalde, and 97 in Floresville. Across the nation this evening, there's quite a bit of severe weather across the Central Plains. Unfortunately, for a lot of those folks, their 4th of July plans are a bit ruined because of the severe weather. Also, a lot of rain across the Mississippi, very active across the United States because there's no real big heat high over this portion of the U.S. But there is over California uh, in the southwest. Notice there's no rain around this heat high. This heat high, which is our enemy in the summer times, it's going to be moving overhead in the coming days. So we've got about three days here where temperatures are going to stay below 100. But Saturday through next week, early next week, highs are going to be anywhere from 100 to 102 with a heat index anywhere from 105 to about 108 around San Antonio. So a bit of a respite from the heat. Hopefully we'll squeeze out some rain tomorrow and Thursday, even though coverage will only be about 20 to 30 percent because by the weekend we'll be roasting. Yeah, it was nice of the mean kid with a magnifying glass pointing the sun at us to move away for a while, but I guess he's coming back. Honestly, that's pretty much how that heat high that's works. What it feels like. <laughs> yep. All right, we'll be right back. All right, let's do some holiday buzzing here. You may not think of Independence Day as a massive injection into the economy, but it kind of is. Wallet Hub compiled some numbers and figured out Americans plan to spend $9.5 billion in food alone for the 4th of July. Some of that will no doubt go to the 150 million hot dogs that people plan to eat that day. Those are ribs, though. We already saw that. <laughs> Another $3 billion will go to beer and wine and $6.5 billion to American flags. Now, Americans will drop another $2.7 billion bucks on fireworks. Now, get this. Bills from emergency room visits for fireworks mishaps were not part of that calculation. Not a bad haul. And when it comes to holograms, it's 
a hard no for Dolly Parton. During a press event for her upcoming album Rockstar, the legendary country singer was asked about the idea of a digital, digital hologram being used in a place after she passed away. And the 77-year-old reportedly said the body of work she already has here on Earth will suffice. In recent years, holograms have been used for the performance from iconic artists such as the late Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and Tupac Shakur. Good call, Dolly Parton. And an ancient, ancient form of transportation is getting a high-tech and modern take makeover. People will soon get to ride in a horse-drawn carriage without a horse. Mm -hmm. The electric vehicle made its debut during the Philadelphia's July 4th parade. The idea has been in the works for several years now. Janet White is the director of Carriage Horse Freedom. She says the switch to an e-carriage will provide a viable and more humane alternative to horse-drawn carriages. The carriage even has a name. It will be called Caroline, in honor of Caroline Earl White, who was an advocate for Philadelphia's stray and abandoned animals. We'll be right back. Before we go, I know a lot of you are getting ready to head out to 4th of July events. I-10 at West Avenue is entirely shut down. A multi-vehicle crash. Police still on the scene working it. You can see the access road there is still open, so give yourself a little extra time if you're heading out that way tonight. Sarah? Yeah, those are the westbound lanes there. And looking at the forecast tonight for fireworks, pretty nice, just breezy. And in the 80s, tomorrow there's a small 20% chance for an isolated downpour. Slightly better chances Thursday and then hot over the weekend. All right, thanks for joining us. Go on and have some of those leftovers now. Be safe out there tonight. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10.